There are a few exceptions on the electron configuration, uh, something that you want to, wouldn't expect. These ex exceptions are going to happen at group six and group 11. So I'm looking at the chromium and the copper to explain these. Um, if we were to write the uh, core notation for, um, let's do chromium. So I go back to the last noble gas. We've got, I'll put it right here, argon. And then we would say 4s2, 3d1234, 3d4. In actuality, this is a 4s1, 3d5. Um, and we get this from PES, from the photo photoelectron spectroscopy data. Um, it's our understanding that this breaks the off-bow principle. The electrons didn't fill the lowest energy level. We didn't fill that S block uh, because of stability. Um, and really the best place to see this is orbital notation. If I do the orbital notation for, um, for each of these, you would have your 4S and then 3D, one, two, three, four. But if I do orbital notation, on the exception, how it really exists in nature, you've got one electron in the 4s, and one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So what you can see is we have a half-filled um, s block and a half-filled d block. This energetically is more stable. It's more stable to have this block that has five orbitals it's more stable to have one electron in each of those than to have a full S block and only have four, oops, sorry, only have four of the five orbitals filled. So it's stability that drives this. More stable to have a half filled D and a half filled S than a full S and a half filled D. Now, for those of you who are in AP chemistry, they have published that they won't ask exception questions. But I'll tell you right now, two years ago, so it was the 2018 test, there was an electron configuration on the test for um, one of the exception elements. And the way they graded it was students had to write it inaccurately. And if they wrote it accurately, they had to justify it saying it was an exception. So um, I think it was a little bit of a cheap shot know the exceptions, and if you have to write the exception, justify it, say it's an exception. PES data is going to be uh, what provides that for us. Okay, let's look at the other exception. And I bet you can see already where this is going. It's copper. So if we would write the core notation for copper, you've got argon, last noble gas, 4s2 for the rest of the electron configuration, 3d9. Our orbital notation would be two electrons in the 4s, one, two, three, four, five. And then notice how I'm drill, I'm filling one electron in each orbital and then I go back and double up. So we have one unpaired electron right there. Uh, here's how it really exists in nature. And again, it's going to be our PES data that shows us this, 4s1, 3d10. An electron from the S moves into the D. So you end up with a half-filled S subshell and a full, two, three, um, a full D subshell. And what's going to drive this energy, always, is going to be more energetically uh, favorable. Now this is going to be the same um, electron configuration for, uh, you're going to see copper, silver, and gold. All that changes are the energy levels. Um, so the gold, if I use that as an example, that would change to, so go back to the last noble gas, xenon, and you would have your 6s1, 5d10, right there. Silver would be the 5s1, 4d10. Same is true when we did the chromium, so molybdenum and tungsten, that they will also take one electron from the s to have a half-filled d, and that's going to be more stable. So there are the classic exceptions. Again, AP, they're not supposed to test on it, but even going into college, it's good for you to know those exceptions. Good work.